Gentlemen, the main event of Beyond Wrestling 2016. I am Eric Corbis, joined alongside by my commentary partner, Sugar Duncan and Shug D. What a contest we have tonight. These two men have faced off two times before tonight, and here we are in the main event in a two out of three falls men match, taking two of the best technical wrestlers on the planet in any weight class facing off in the main event of American Rana 2016. This is going to be a really interesting contest just due to the simple fact that right now Jonathan Grisham holds two singles victories over Sack Sabre Jr., who some would say is the greatest technical wrestler in the world right now, current Cruiserweight Classic competitor as well. And the thing about it is these two are actually really good friends. They went to many draws over in England, and they had to come to America to actually settle it, where Grisham was able to get the final decision in two separate matches. Zack Sabre Jr. takes pride in the fact that he is the greatest technical wrestler on the planet. He is not about to let Grisham beat him twice in one night. It just can't happen like that. He's not going to let his reputation go on the line like that. What does that do for a competitor like Jonathan Gresham to defeat a man three times in the world in a row who is known as one of the greatest technical wrestlers in the world who has gone on to the second round of the Cruiserweight Classic with a submission victory over Tyson Dukes? Yep. You know Jonathan Gresham better than many professional wrestlers in this world right Ran many a road with him, He's yeah. a Georgian native, yep. just like you. You guys have trained together. You guys have come up together. What does Jonathan, Jonathan Gresham have to do for the trifecta? Very aggressive takedowns, by the way, I'd like to mention. You'll notice Zack Sabre. Zack Sabre Jr. is usually not this aggressive with his opposition, 
but he's realizing he's coming in with something to prove. And to answer your question as far as it goes, Grissom's just going to have to bring that blend of beautiful Japanese striking along with the Euro-style grappling that he's, been do that he's been doing. Not that Zack Sabre Jr. can't hang with Grisham in a strike contest, I just think Grisham's the better striker between the two. If we're talking about as far as tech for tech, well, that European uppercut may, may make me a fool out of that one. But if we're talking tech for tech, I think Zack Sabre Jr. has got a little bit of the edge. The thing that we have to keep in mind, too, is Zack Sabre Jr., he's got all the hype on him. He gets the premier bookings. He's in Reseda. He's all over the world, progress wrestling, everything to that effect. Jonathan Grisham has had to scrape, claw, and get all the reputation that he's so far earned, and he's probably one of the most diamond-in-the-rough wrestlers right now at the moment. He needs to beat Zack Sabre Jr. so that people start seeing him the way that they see Zack Sabre. But Zack Sabre's got a reputation to protect as they fight over right now these hip tosses. So, complete bias aside, how you feel about Gresham, how I feel about either two of these competitors, tail of the tape, Saber has the experience. Saber has the hype. Saber has the weight advantage. Saber has the hype behind him right now with everything going on in the Cruiserweight Classic. Even though Gresham is up two wins in this trifecta, he almost walks into this match as the underdog. I, and I can definitely hear that. And the thing about it is, this is one of those matches where it'll definitely cement Who's the better man? Either you win it twice in one night. That's what's going to do it. Wow, the pie face right there by Sabre. I've never seen them act like this to each, towards each other. And the thing is, you have to understand, they're really good to each other, really friendly, respectful of each other. I've never seen them lay into each other. Forearm for Euro right now. Forearm for Euro. These, oh. these are two men that are so well known for their sportsmanship and their respect on one another. And Sabre able to counter that into an abdominal stretch. But look how much more deep he is able to go on an individual that he has the height advantage over. See what I'm trying to tell you, though? When it was a strike contest, you noticed Sabre was starting to fold. So he took it right back to the technical edge when it was time to go. You'll notice in the last two matches that they had, as soon as it started turning into a strike fest, that's when it started getting into Grisham's wheelhouse just a little bit because he's got that aggression factor. And right now, both men hit toss each other to the outside, and I don't think there's going to be any room for hammer locks on the floor. And this is not something you necessarily expect from Jonathan Gresham or Zack Sabre Jr. for things to spill out onto the floor this early in a contest. This is a two out of three falls match. This match can go on for as long as this building will allow it. These two men are going to have to one-up each other at every single turn, and you're not necessarily going to win a fall on the outside. And we're back to the strike trade again, and I'm telling you, every time they get into this strike trade position, I, I, maybe if Zack Sabre Jr. wants to go there, he needs to switch it up to possibly those precision kicks that he does. Yeah, but look, he caught that chop. And see, right back to the, techni right back to the technical side, bending those fingers back so he can get the elbow. Now taking them down by the knee. I'm thinking he's going to try and break or crack those fingers. Look at the bend on that right there. The small digit manipulation, not necessarily legal in other combat sports, but 100% legal in professional wrestling. However, if Jonathan Gresham was the top on the outside, it would not count. This is a two out of three falls match. Every fall needs to take place inside of that ring, whether it's a pinfall or a submission. Kevin Quinn on the outside trying to, to Convince these men. Wow, look at this. Inside. When's the last time you've ever seen Zack Sabre Jr. go for the eyes or the nose on an opponent? When was the last time you saw Zack Sabre Jr. at the lower end? At the lower end of a series, Zack Sabre Jr. down 0-2 to two in wins and losses to Jonathan Gresham. But did you see what he just did? Sounds like a lead pipe blasting off right there. Grisham was trying to reassert control with those precision chops and then just kills the post right there. So that's definitely going to hurt the same hand that that Zack Sabre Jr. was trying to work over oh, in the no. first place. Look at the way his wrist is bent. Look at the way his fingers Oh, no! 
I hope that Beyond Wrestling has medical staff in the locker room because after a, a stomp like that on Jonathan Gresham, he might not even be able to feel his fingers. And now, the, the best way I could probably describe that for the folks at home, you've been there and you've tapped yourself on the elbow at an awkward time, and you know that pain shoots all the way down. So he's going all the way from elbow to forearm, all the way down to the tips of the fingers. Gresham may not have the same striking power. And look at it. He's neutralized the striking power on Jonathan Gresham, which puts the advantage back into Zack Sabre's wheelhouse. Now his strikes are more effective, and he still can exert his technical edge over Jonathan Gresham. The man's a thinking man's wrestler. Gresham's still trying to shake off the pain in his hand right now. I mean, that's what you have to be. This isn't necessarily just a wrestling match. This is a chess game. This is about who makes the right moves at the right time. Yes, you can connect with those strikes and those submissions, but what is going to put your opponent away? It's it's a time game. And you know it's, it's about finding those openings. Did you notice Grisham trying to flex in the face of Zack Sabre, just trying to show him no fear, no pain? And that's a big thing that he learned over there in Japan. They still try to show that intimidation factor even when they're weaker. Oh, oh my goodness! Gresham going for the mixed direction. Zack Sabre Jr. had it scouted with that roundhouse kick to the back of the leg, sending Gresham onto the back of his head. And this is exactly the opportunity that Zack Sabre Jr. needed. He just whiplashed him off of there. It's, that's not good at all. Look at the way that Gresham is clutching the back of his head, the back of his neck. And that's the most rattled I've seen Grisham in this match right now, trying to get himself together. He might have stung himself right there in the neck, and that's no good. She's trying to back him up, and Sabre penetrating through with that big forearm. Ooh. Drop kick to the back of the neck. An absolutely scientific move. Zack Sabre Jr. seeing the target on the back of the head after that back kick. You can see that Gr that Gresham's neck is hurt, and now he's targeting it. Would you have ever guessed that just last night, Zack Sabre Jr. was in Reseda, California, and not only defended against Kyle O'Reilly, but then also defended his championship again versus Roderick Strong. And now he's in the middle of the ring with Jonathan Gresham going two out of three falls, exerting his dominance right now. And, and, and you talked about his title being on the line, and, and it's almost... I feel that this is almost more important because it's not a title. It's not a championship. It's the show. respect. It's the respect. He has lost two times to that man. He has everything to prove to not one of the 400 plus people here in Fed Music. He has it to prove to himself. This is a very innovative bow and arrow variation right here by Zack Sabre Jr. Deciding to sit on the top of the back, the, the base of the spine right there on Jonathan Grisham and then just yanking back on those arms right there. You can see the torque. You can see Jonathan Gresham's deltoids in complete... Oh, uh, look at him. Look at him. You can look at him from here. You can see the way it is. Jonathan Gresham is not a person that will necessarily look to the ropes to counter a hold. He believes in escapism. He believes in that, in, in that technical style of wrestling. For Jonathan Gresham to reach to the ropes says a lot about what's going on right And now. walked himself over there, too, to make sure that it was clear that they made the break. Is Gresham scared right now, Shook? Is Gresham scared? Between his neck and his arm, this this much into the match, we're we're, ne we're not even five minutes into this match, Shook. God, just grinding that elbow in like like that. Very very reminiscent of William Regal back in the day. He loved to take the, the the point of the elbow and just grind it in, especially when he was going for pins. Grisham is in a bad way. I've never seen him this bad in a match since probably Donovan Dijak. This is. Z Saber is breaking him down in a way that I've never seen him try before. Tries to roll through and rolls through with the cravat. Grisham has got to mount something here. Oh, he got his finger in the ear with that cravat. Oh, yeah, see that? It's the little stuff, man. It's so odd to see two individuals that are, that are so based on, on sportsmanship and back and forth and, and that escape is to, to really be this aggressive with one another. Pride will make you do some things that you never thought you would do. 
when it comes time to get the victory because all that's going to last is glory at the end of the day on this one. This is America on round of 16. You do what it takes. This is the main event spot that many people thought Grisham would never be in, and now we're seeing two of the best technical wrestlers in the world, and Grisham trying to assert himself as the best technical wrestler in the world. Big body slam to break that cravat. But look at the way that he's clutching the back of his head, the back of his neck. The damage has been done, sure. A lot of people thought going into American Ronda that it would be Donovan Dijak, Chris Dickinson, and JT Dunn as the main event. But with, with the performances that these two men have put on, these men earn the top spot in Beyond Wrestling. These men earn the main event at, at, at American Ronda. And Running shot, catches the boot, runs him back in again. Ooh! Oh, goodness gracious! That fighting spirit showing through with the double chop right there on Zack Sabre Jr. trying to cave his chest in today. You gotta think, from Jonathan Gresham's standpoint, the fact that 32 men were chosen as the best cruiserweights in the world and he wasn't on that list. Five alternates. Has to eat him up inside. Five alternates Especially at that too. Especially the fact that he has two wins over Zack Sabre Jr., who has made it to the Sweet 16 yep. of the tournament. If he was able to defeat this man and defeat him three times in a row, it shows the WWE, it shows the wrestling world that him being overshadowed was a mistake. Absolutely. Low stunner by Grisham, followed by Enziguri. Try to go for it again, slips on the low stunner. Puts him in a stunt rider stretch right there. And then also gets a variant on a headlock while he's pulling in, just muffling them right there. It's and I like and a I, surfboard dragon sleep. Absolutely. And I completely agree with the fact that if you get a if you get three clutch wins over over somebody like Zack Sabre Jr., that's gotta put you in the conversation for Cruiserweight, Cruiserweight Classic one, 2017. Two. I mean, it's something that has been talked about that is going to continue. This isn't a one-off thing. Absolutely. Not able to connect with that moonsault. With the pin, roll through, bridging down, but it catches one. him two, what? three. Wait, wait, wait. Who, who pinned who? I think they might have both pinned each other. He cradled. Grissom cradled his arms while he was trying to roll back. We're on the final four already. It just got real. The tiger hold and the bridge. They pinned one another. Senior official Kevin Quinn declaring it a draw, giving both of these competitors one victory. Buzzsaw kick. That's it. One, two. We're immediately in the sudden death right now. You notice Saber, the tenacity. He did not get the kick out of midair like he wanted. So when Grisham found no water in the pool, he just drilled him in the back of his neck with that with that buzzsaw kick. Did you hear the connection? Did you hear that sound? Show? Listen, when you go into a two to three fall, two out of uh, two out of three falls match. Even as a commentator, you save your energy. You know you're gonna get to that third fall. Who who would have thought that this soon in the match we'd have a draw? We'd have one to one. Old rollerball Rocco move that he just did right there to reverse that. Gets the leg pick, rolls him through, tries to kick the arm, a good Grisham special. Judo kick right there to the gut, runs through. Low drop kick to take down Zack Sabre Jr. And I'm gonna tell you, this is clutch time. Every little movement counts right now because the next win or submission is your last. Rolls through, leg pick. Oh, he got the ankle lock! On that injured leg of Zack Sabre Jr., Gresham is able to grab that ankle. This is where the height is going to come into play for Zack Sabre Jr. He's able to get that, try to go for the penalty kick. Kicks him right in the, oh, right in the back of the knee right there. Mule kick to the back of the knee. With, with men like Zack Sabre Jr. and men like Jonathan Gresham, this is not the match that I expected to call with you, Sugar Dunkerton, being at a draw at one to one this early in the match, and this match being that aggressive. I've never seen them beat on each other the way that they beat on each other. This is, you, you, would, you would not think that these two have the kind of respect for each other that they do the way that they're dogging each other out right now. Respect is one thing, but, but that drive to win, that drive to be the best is just well, that much more. A foot is not supposed to bend like that. That is scaring me, the angle in which he's torquing that foot. Have you ever seen Zack Sabre Jr. reach for a rope to break a hole? He's taking his kick pad up. 
the look on his face, the look of anguish and absolute pain. And Grisham giving him a chance to stand up. He's had to take the kick pad up because he's trying to relieve the pressure on that ankle. And notice he takes a stance back so he can protect the ankle. European uppercut, but he can't quite get the full momentum because he can't step through on it. That might be the most respect that I've seen shown from these men thus far in this match. Formed by Grisham right there. European uppercut again. The step through is lacking on that, so not the same power. You can see. Oh. I will say this. He did show some respect for Zack Sabre Jr. because instead of the dick tap that he usually does, he did just nod his thigh up there right quick. That is, that, oh, that is not what you want to see at, at this juncture. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at the way he was torquing the neck. Twisting his neck like he's, like he's a bad dog or something like that. Like Zack Sabre Jr., jeez. Does somebody owe somebody some money or some euros or some pounds or something like that? Because this, this this is getting personal quick. And for two guys that, that are so well known for their scientific prowess, to just go into somebody's limb like that, it, it, it's absolute debauchery. <laughs> you, you just used debauchery, debauchery on commentary? Okay, cool. Dude, the way he stomped his leg down in the middle of the ring like that was absolutely disgusting. There's people that pay good money for some of the stuff that's happening to each other right now, so we'll just leave it at that. Oh, look at the way he's still going back to that leg. Look at the way it's twisting. Look at the way he's twisting it. God, look at the screams of agony from and Zach Saber Jr. And he just tried to pop face Grisham with his foot there. Grisham working the crowd into this right now. I have watched so many Zack Saber Jr. matches, and I have never, ever listened to him squeal in pain like he was just doing in the corner right they now. They are dissecting limbs right now, and this is this is not good. This is the kind of stuff where they may have to cancel a book or two to try and get right after a match like this. But, but they're putting it all on the line for the sake of America and Rana. The only thing that worries me about Grish and this toehold that he's got right now, those long legs of Zack Saber Jr., he wants to neutralize that because he can still get kicked. He can still get stomped. Uh, I think, no, no, no. You were exactly right. The long limbs of Zack Sabre Jr. working to his advantage with that spinning toe hold. Tried to run, but he couldn't get his footing because of his leg. Oh, no. Oh, no. Cradle. Oh, he's got that tiger hold. Double underhook. Oh, no! Cradle tiger suplex! Jeez. And we saw the damage that Jonathan Gresham took to the back of his neck earlier in this match, and Zack Sabre Jr. able to go right back to it. Look at the the veteran savvy, though, by Gresham. He takes that suplex, goes immediately to his knees, because you can't get pinned unless you're on your back. And he goes right to the ropes. You can't pin somebody if they're that close. Moves his leg out of the way. Try for the penalty kick, miss. Oh, but he gets the second one. If at first you don't succeed, in the words of Aaliyah, you can dust yourself but he off and try still again. Had to base off of that injured leg. Wasn't evil even able to stand up. It might be worth it. Step through. Half Nelson, excuse me, half cradle butterfly suplex right there. Going for that. Cover. I, I would be covering him immediately. I think he's giving up no, too much room to that breathe. Neck snap again. That tweak. Whoa. Oh. He's trying to get the momentum, and he does it! And hurts his own ankle in the process of doing it. He really should have took that pin when he had the chance. Now he's at a he's at a situation where he's hurting himself just to do damage to Grisham. And you have to wonder how much of yourself you can give just for the victory without killing yourself in the process. Dude, there are so many ligaments in your knee, your ACL, your MCL, your, your meniscus. There are so many things that you can injure. And, and, and Zack Sabre Jr. put himself in a precarious position, and he finally hits that moonsault. Oh, Shining wizard. Oh, no. Hits it. This could be it, Shug, too. Ooh. It's that here it is driver right there. Grisham trying to put it together. You notice 
as we're starting to get into this, this apex of the match, he's trying to piece together combinations to go ahead and put this man away. It's going to take that kind of tenacity in order to be able to go ahead and sew this up because Grisham is a little behind on the board right now, so he's got to be able to make up ground. Yeah, but with, with everything that's been going on with Zack Sabre Jr.'s leg, with, with Jonathan Gresham delivering a, a maneuver onto the neck of Zack Sabre Jr. It wasn't necessarily the best option, but here he is going to that leg. Is he able to get it? He crosses it over into that figure four. The calamari, he didn't quite have it yet. Ooh. Oh, right in the ear. The calamari catch can't catches it. I have never seen Jonathan Gresham give up a hold like the way he just did there after taking that. You take a shot to the ear, that's gonna rattle you. You don't have no equilibrium. Oh, he no. catches him. Euro, Rose backside roll. Oh no, back to the back of the head, Shook. Ouch. Liger bomb. One, two, oh, he kicks it. Rolls through. Oh no. I've seen him put away many a competitor with this same submission hold and evolve. But this is he going to be able to put what, whatever he can into it with that hurt knee? He's not able to. Double stomp through the roll through right there. You can't deliver a submission like that without the full use of your knee. Oh. No small package right there. Rolls through, goes low. Throw away German suplex. Just. Again. Oh, he tried to show fighting spirit. This is crazy. Boots to the face. Chris won't stop. 8.0 on the Kobashi scale right there with that Larry. Delayed German. one. Where are they getting this from? Zack Saber Jr. And you can hear this crowd, the fact that Zack Sabre Jr. was able to put up the defense that he did with that injured knee. You can see him clutching it right now. It is do or die right now. Whatever the hell these guys were just on during that stretch, they need to bottle it, they need to sell it. They will put Monster out of business, I promise you that. Where do we go from here? Zack Sabre Jr.'s injured leg Jonathan Gresham's injured neck. And it seems like that is the target for both of them. Gresham slamming on that leg. Zack Sabre Jr. slamming into the face of Jonathan Gresham. God, this is so savage right now, that the way these two are just laying into each other. Ooh! Are you kidding me? Are you even... What the hell is going on? This would be a stoppage in, in mixed martial arts, the way that he's getting them with those unprotected headshots right there. And Grisham, he's in a bad way right now. But was he able to connect with as much strength as he wanted to? And look at him. the base of his leg was that injured knee. True. And look at him, he's trying to push himself up off of his shoulders just to be able to get to his feet. This is what the Japanese style of dojo training tries to teach you, to build strong legs so that even on a, on a even when your equilibrium is off, you can stand. Oh, no! He doesn't even have an equilibrium after a knee like that. And Zack Sabre Jr. trying to, hoping for the knockout on this one. Dude, it's not very often that you see a two out of three falls match end with a knockout. That's where it's gone. That's where this match has been taken. This is going to be about who wants it the most right now. Who is about their reputation. Oh, Dragon Screw! Out of midair. And he twisted through into the figure four on that injured knee. It was good enough for a certain 16-time world heavyweight champion. Is it good enough for Jonathan Grisham? We saw the punishment that Junior has taken on his knee over the course of this match. If he sticks in the, he is right in the he middle of the He has got that ring. locked in too. Saber is nowhere near the ropes. And he keeps going right for the ear. He is ringing Grisham's bell. He is nowhere near the ropes. Saber's trying to turn it. He doesn't seem to have the straight. Oh, he does. No, but Grisham's able to roll through. Oh. God, this is not looking good for Zack Sabre Jr. 
He is in a bad way right now. And he's just slapping, banging on that injured cervical vertebrae. And he's, and he's got it! Zack Zach Sabre Jr. taps out in the final fall to Jonathan Grisham. That makes three matches in a row that the Calamari Catch King has beaten the King of Arm Bars. American Rana 16, Jonathan Grisham's night. Kings to both of these gentlemen. Like I said, we don't have the microphone here live, but your winner by submission over Zack Sabre Jr. with the figure four leg lock is Jonathan Gresham. Sugar Dunkerton, what a night it has been here at American Rana 2016. My name is Eric Corbis for Sugar Dunkerton and all of the men that have done commentary tonight at Beyond Wrestling in our return to FET Music. Zack Sabre Jr., Jonathan Gresham, thank you so much for putting your bodies on the line for our entertainment, and we will see you next time at Beyond Wrestling. Don't miss us out on Beyond Demand and also Smart Mark Video. The mic is broken. So this is me speaking right now. I wrestled with you all around the world. I've wrestled for 11 years. And you are the one person that every time I wrestle in this ring, I come out better every single time. Yeah. So.